So I've been with the, the team for just under two years now. So I um, was with them in the computer. Um, I joined this beginning of this, this latest campaign. So we're roughly halfway through about a four year cycle um, towards the next Americans Cup to be here uh, in Auckland in uh, summer 2021. Um, so it's a completely brand new class of a lot of design work today, so there hasn't been a lot of uh, action on the water. Um, a little bit to show you, but um, the first 75 foot boats will be launched by the, uh, the teams in the coming months, so um, there's going to be a lot more uh, public visibility from that point of view. Um, so, yeah, thanks to the lead guys for pointing us out. Yeah, I know they've been a strong supporter of the team for a number of campaigns now. I'm not sure how many, but uh, there's a few. Um, and you have know, been using as this product uh, for a lot of our uh, that out of structural simulation work. And, uh, you know, a really big part of what the work that we do. Uh, so, just a couple of videos here about the product that we're designing. Um, so, this uh, video I've linked here is from the New York Golf Club team, American Magic is their name. Um, so, they've developed uh, approximately a half scale boat um, that they've been sailing. Uh, up in Pensacola in Florida in the States over the um, house on of their, their winter. Um, so they released the promotional material, which is pretty good for the, the event itself to see this concept in action. Um, I think it's the same for the tanks and all that sort of stuff. So for a, a brand new concept, um, it's really good to be able to see an actual design working. So you can see one of the key features here are these um, twin ballasted foils. Um, so they provide both the lift boiling and so the, um, the writing moment to keep the boat upright. Um, so there's no keel, um, just a single T runner at the back. Uh, so it's taking some of the element or a lot of the kind of boiling elements from the last couple of cups for the catamarans. Um, but I think that actually a lot of help concept. Um, the on the right side, which is something I'll talk about in a bit more detail later on. Um, is a, a twin skin rain, so it's on the soft sails rather than the um, hard and semi rigid wings that, that we used in San Francisco and Bermuda. Um, but there were two sails, so it allows us to form more of a, an aerodynamic section um, through through that main sail part of the rig. Um, some of you may have seen there's been some uh, recent media put out about the, um, the testing of oil arms. So these are approximately four meter long um, kind of composite structure that hold the, the oil arms. So essentially the full weight of the boat is being um, assisted on these arms and the long so there's a lot of bending moment there. Um, so this was a, a project that's been this is a one design supplied component. So every team receives a set of exactly the same arms and there's no ability for them to modify that, that structure, um, they can put some, some little fairings on and that sort of stuff, but the main structural component is exactly the same for each team. Um, there's obviously the safety element, because this is carrying all the load of the boat, and the cranks are going bad, and sitting up high and going fast. Um, so there's been a big um, effort uh, led by the uh, Challenger of Record, which is Lynn Rossett, the Italian team, um, and just recently that um, passed its um, full scale. Uh, quite a testing process. Um, so you can see here in this video, I think up to about I think, uh, 30 tons or so on the line, yeah, um, uh, which is approximately three times the, the maximum expected dynamic load that we'd see during sailing. Um, it's a pretty big structure, so it's about, about that big of cord and, and this big of thickness and a uh, hell of a pain when it's right there. But, um, as you can see, the guys are pretty happy when they pass through. So these components are all in construction and being sort of shipped out to the, the teams to be integrated with their first five, um, as we speak. Uh, so yeah, that was a, a big project. Um, as far as ANSYS um, use within the team itself, we've got about a 30 person design team and the team of all leaders is maybe 200 people at full strength. Uh, and that's what sort of design and sailing by building short team and just those sorts of things. So, um, and of that 30 person size team, um, I did a head count the other day, and there's about 12 of us who are using the ANSYS products either full time or, or part time. So, maybe half of that um, 
heard the using it pretty much full time and I was sort of say primarily mechanical design engineers so we'd be jumping into answers to check on their um, on their designs before it goes to a you know, full scale analysis or on the first directly um to manufacture at that point. Um, and yeah, and, and within that we split maybe half and half between fluid dynamics and, and structures. Um, Generally, the fluid dynamic side tends to be more specialized, so I suppose guys are usually working on that stuff full time, um, structures, and just around people like me who are doing it more or less full time, and then um, obviously doing it in and out of the products. Uh, we've also got two uh, master students uh, projects that we're supporting uh, through the University of Auckland, so these guys are actually based inside the team uh, for like five days a week. Um, one, one's a uh, fluid dynamics project, and the other one's a structural one, so it's good to yeah. And some support from the university there, and, and some, some young guys coming through it, uh, some clients and helping the team. Uh, as far as hardware goes, uh, we've got access to um, workstations, but HP are one of our, our sponsors, so they've set us up with a um, 500 core on site cluster um, that Steve Colley uh, came up with and put it all together. Um, so that's just sitting in a little port on the base. Um, that's, that's being used a lot, mostly with the uh, uh, CMD work. Uh, but there's a, a lot of simulation involved in this, this campaign. It's the whole design system. Um, the rig is fairly open, so it's all driven out with some simulation of the, the rig, and then also the, the hydrodynamics around the foils and all the composite structures that we've got. So um, there's been a scope of simulation here using this. Um, this on site cluster pretty much 100% of the time. Um, yeah, I've created a couple of other little answers images of the main products that we're using. So, on the structural side, mechanical enterprises, main package that we've got there, um, floods guys, CFX, and then um, you can actually see functionality is pretty important for uh, making use of that hardware that we've got. Um, yeah, so, I've got a yeah, let's give us a, a little bit of, of what we're doing. Um, so on the structure side, uh, opposites. Engineering is a, is a really big part of what we do. Pretty much all the primary structures are uh, composites, maybe say 75% or so. So the uh, chances of composite are pretty high all the time. Um, not with the uh, work package. package. Um, actually use a fair bit of answers classic, so I was looking for one of these. Uh, the modern uh, mapping material to, to put up there, but I couldn't find one. So uh, we still use some of the other technology as well. That's quite strong. Um, yeah, in, in general speaking, we're doing everything from simple linear analysis on mechanical, uh, sorry, metallic parts um, through the full non linear simulation and buffering um, sort of linear analyses are a big part of what we do, um, and also uh, structural optimization. So, on the composite side, that would be fiber direction, um, fly shapes, and orientations. Um, a lot of 3D composites work too, so combination solid modeling um, and, and shell modeling is important there. Um, and on the, the fluid dynamic side, I'm not really expert in that area, but um, you can probably imagine there's a lot of work that, that goes in there on aerodynamics, hydrodynamics, and then also, like I said, simulation based things here. So, um, one of the big tools that the team has is a um, full um, physics simulator of a boat that used to heavily read a campaign. So, that is a lot of mathematical model of the boat that the sailors can uh, sail without getting on the water. Um, but all the data that goes into that, so the relationship between the state of the boat and the forces acting on it, um, comes from solving lots and lots of um, fluid dynamics. Uh, problems with the full grains, CFT, or this is applied potential code. Because, so that data all gets aggregated and, and simplified into an efficient enough package that you can run a real time simulation of the code and um, assess its performance and sensitivity and changes in um, track and all that sort of thing. Yeah, so th this far as this specific project goes, we're obviously not going to get into too many details about what we've got to design this time, but um, the, the foil line that I showed earlier was one of the, the supply components. Another one that wasn't a supply component, but a supply baseline design was the um, D-Spar mast. Uh, so 
this is work that the team I've decided to do the baseline instructional engineering for this month, and then each team is provided with that essentially a package of drawings that they can use to build their masks. Um, it's just a baseline design because each team is going to have different um, ways that they want to control their sales. Um, they might want to run through different load cases and reinforce or trade off um, the stiffness of the ring against the uh, weight of material in there. Um, so it's a baseline design that gives everyone a cuts out the, uh, I don't know, maybe 80% of the work or Two thirds of the work um, that goes into engineering the mask, and then they can just focus on things that are going to get that specific performance advantage. Um, so, yeah, the, the mask is, is a D spar section. So, as I said before, it was a twin skin mainstyle, so you have um, a tangent sequence of condition posed here um, on the port and starboard sides, and then the, the sail is cut off and formed. Essentially, a classical view of shape. Um, it's about 650 by 400 millimeters, and it's a uh, um, uh, honeycomb, carbon, carbon, carbon fiber um, structures. So it's traditional mass, uh, uh, carbon fiber mass that are usually monolithic um, construction, but because these are so big, uh, well, it's not going to give you much detail, but normally it's incentive to get the mass relatively small, um, just because it's a bit of aerodynamics and also because you want to try and bend in the mass to manipulate the sail shape. But because we've got these two sails, there's not such a penalty for having a wide structure um, because you know, there's big separation areas behind um, the trailing edges. Uh, so that's be quite large um, and you get a lot of stiffness from that. So it's a, it's a very stiff mass, but if you were to make that more like that, you could be run into um, panel bump and stability issues. Um, so uh, these, these wings are still to be uh, a honeycomb construction. So there's aluminium honeycomb forming a core on both sides and then some monolithic regions <coughs> which are the main structural stiffening elements. Um, we are sort of chop up all the information out of these um, graphs but um, yeah, not, not too much. Yeah, we'll set up a uh, combination of set shell and solid model um, with all the ACP laminate information in there, um, model the rigging. Um, but probably the most interesting stuff we've got with it here um, there's, there's a, I don't know how many people are in the industry, but um, there's a software package that North Sales has called Membrane, which is a uh, it's a sail and rig simulation package that couples uh, potential flow code for the, the flow of the sails and uh, a stick model of the rigging and, and the mast. So, um, the guys that are running out will just have a beam model, stiffness so values that model the mast. But that's a full, uh, normally a coupled simulation fluid structure interaction. Um, it runs very efficiently, so you can go through lots of iterations there, uh, generate a whole suite of load cases. And then I spent a bit of time developing a, a Python interface between ANSYS and Membrane that would take. So this is, for example, showing the distributed loading from the uh, left of one of the sales along the length of the nuts. Um, so the kind of interfacing code that we wrote would take this information package it automatically into some um, APL command objects that would be read into a um, mechanical, the full uh, nonlinear shell model, um, and it's mechanical, and then that would output normal things that you get from the model. Um, so, we stability analysis, um, reserve factors for the uh, composite laminates, um, and then uh, there's some verification tools there. So those plots on the top show the, the reflection of the mass for the load case and that's a very valid membrane as well that we can use to validate um, the correlation between the two. Um, so we're getting really good agreement between the full um, as the shell model and the versions from membrane. So that gives us a lot of confidence to um, assess a, a wide variety of load cases um, in this new rig. Um, there's just a couple of animations here of uh, um, uh, this is the runner overload case, so this is the, the runner here pulling on that well beyond its, its normal conditions. And see this point where the um, movement gap shroud starts to go slack for a bit so that you see it, but that'll go slack, and then you go from being bent like a banana to completely um, collapsing. And then uh, the other one here is for a code zero case where you're pulling on that code zero helium up here. Um, 
point size or kind of meaning of forward. Um, so generally we're running the simulations to check how the um, to check our stability margins because um, form a normal eigenvalue analysis, but because there's so much um, change in shape of the spa and it also affects the you know, all the kind of follower force effects and the reading elements that it's, it's quite important to model those nonlinearities to see how the, the actual um, stability evolves as you go hard on like your elements. Um, and then the other part of the yeah, traditional, um, this is just a straight plot right here. <coughs> and this is just showing some local panel buffer localized modes there. So generally the idea was to balance that global stability against the, the local modes and then also the allowable. The uh, strength of the for the moment. So, I have that for the model where I'm going to capture the simulation, which is pretty handy. Yeah, so that's uh, the technical stuff. I'm just in terms of what's next for the, uh, the campaign and what the team's up to. So, as I said at the beginning, um, in a couple of months, we'll be launching our boat along with the other competitors, and um, that will be quite interesting because it's complete. Rails are doing it with an so the boats should look quite different. Um, so, for anyone who's got a keen eye on that kind of thing, there'll be hopefully there's some pretty um, interesting uh, differences in the shape of these boats and how they appear and how they sail. Um, and then in 2020, so next year, um, there'll be a number of events um, uh, internationally where the boats will be up for regatta's and compete for this time. And then in 2021, the Challenger Series, the Park Cup. Uh, it's in January, February, and then we're going straight up to the American Cup in March 2021. I guess one of our competitors. Interesting to see who gets there, but hopefully we can beat them. Alright, that's all I've got, so thank you. Head mouse.